first. <laughs> like this. I'm really sorry for keeping you waiting. I, I really, I, I walked out of my room and forgot my stupid iPad. Oh, I'm sorry, iPad. I didn't mean that. <laughs> it only does everything. There's an app for everything. I was at a uh, convention in uh, Washington, D.C. last January where it was freezing cold. Everybody was freezing their butts off. And I said, ah, well, there's an app for everything. The guy said, yeah, we'll find a hand warmer. There is one. <laughs> Not a good idea to use, though. It overclocks the CPU and makes your unit warm up. <laughs> By unit, I mean the iPad. <laughs> So, um, on my panel, uh, I'm willing to talk about and answer any questions. Boy, it's human outside today, isn't it? Is it just me? I don't know. It's because I ran back and forth real fast. Not um, I'm willing to answer any questions about voice acting, about Duke Nukem Forever, about Twisted Metal 4, about Die Hard Trilogy, but any of those things that you want to ask me about, I'm, I'm willing to talk about. And when they come up at the appropriate times, I'll have some uh, audio to play for you, some fun little things. Uh, it was brought to my attention that um, Duke Nukem fans like to hear outtakes from the game, so I brought some of those. And, and I brought a, a couple of other things that are kind of fun. Um, for instance, um, I'm going to play one for you to get things started here. A fellow asked me a while ago, he's a, a Hispanic fellow, who wanted to know, you know, what would it sound like if Duke spoke Spanish? <laughs> to which I said, no habla espanol. He said, but if he did, what would it sound like? So I put this together, I, I hope you like it. Translating Duke Nukem. English to Spanish. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? Tu cara, tu culo, cuál es la diferencia? <laughs> I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. De arranco por la cabeza, te cago por el cuello. <laughs> I've got balls of steel. Tengo pelotas de hierro. Ball, ball, balls of steel. Pelotas, pelotas, pelotas de hierro. That one especially for the fans of the Ventrilo harassment. So, wow, I'm trying to cool down here. Uh, and while I do, how about uh, questions and answers for a couple of minutes before we uh, do some other fun things? And sir, you had your hand up first. What, what would you like to know? What do you think about the media reviews of Duke Nukem Forever? I think some of the reviews suck. And, and, and the reason I say that is because uh, they, they gave Duke Nukem like 3 out of 10. To me, unfair. Now, I, of course I'm biased being the voice of Duke Nukem, and because I've played the game and I think it's fucking awesome. Um, I don't appreciate them comparing Duke Nukem to Call of Duty and other first-person shooters because that's not what Duke Nukem is about. First of all, Modern Warfare games, that's about killing other humans in a war-type situation, okay? Duke Nukem, total fantasy, saving hot babes from aliens, and you're not killing humans, you're killing aliens, and it's so damn interactive. Come on, you get to stop and play pinball, get the punching bag, play air hockey, pick up a turd out of a toilet, for God's sake. <laughs> take, a, take a leak in the urinal at the beginning of the game. That's what Duke Nukem is about. It's funny, it's raunchy, it's sexy, and it's violent all at the same time. <laughs> so to, to give Duke low ratings because they want to compare it to other first-person shooter games, in my opinion, is unfair. And as I've written on Twitter and Facebook a few times to you reviewers out there, frickin' play Duke Nukem 3D first to understand what Duke's about before you review the new game. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. Oh, Tron. Are you Tron? Is that Tron? Yeah, Tron. Sorry, I can't see you. And uh, I was wondering, what were you doing and what was your reaction when you got the call saying that they would making a new, making Duke Nukem 3D, I mean Duke Nukem Forever? Okay, um, Kristen Hagland at Triptych Software in Plano, Texas. Kristen, by the way, is the woman who wrote all of the raunchy Duke Nukem lines that you did in the game. That's right, two chicks wrote all of the Duke Nukem Forever stuff. I got to add lib a few and throw in a couple of douche nozzles here and there, but... Anyway, Kristen calls me in my home studio one day. She goes, Hi John, this is Kristen Hagland, I'm calling you from Triptych Software. And I didn't even know who Triptych was. And she said, I just want to let you know that hell has frozen over. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, well, I've been on your website, 
And your website says, and someday when hell freezes over, maybe you'll get to do the voice of Duke Nukem forever. And I went, oh, are you shitting me? <laughs> she said, no, hell has frozen over, so let's get this party started. And that was at the end of 2008. <laughs> so that tells you something. I had to uh, immediately sign a non-disclosure agreement, which meant I was not allowed to talk about Duke Nukem forever. And so for three bloody years, well, people and fans said, ah, that's a loser, they're never going to make that game. I had to bite my tongue and say nothing. <laughs> which, for a big mouth like me, is pretty hard to do. <laughs> so uh, I, I just about uh, soiled myself when I got that call. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yes, sir? No, the real development time really was like 14 years. What happened originally was with uh, 3D Realms, George Broussard and his crew, was they wanted to stay cutting edge. You know, they wanted it to be as state of the art as it could. And game engines kept being right. They had to keep redeveloping it, re, re I, I don't know how coding works, but they had to re-change the game for every new game engine. And then when uh, Randy Pitchford and Gearbox took over in uh, 2000, late 8, 2008, 2009, they said, okay, all the artwork is pretty much done. Let's just wrap it up and, and make it a little more interactive. They came up with the ideas of, you know, uh, picking up the turd, making it more interactive, changing it. Instead of having health, you have ego, which is pretty cool for a dude. <laughs> and uh, I think also, by the way, if I can go back for just a second to so why some of the reviews were not good was because they wanted Duke Nukem Forever to be exactly like Duke Nukem 3D, where you could have all the weapons all the time. No, you only get two weapons at a time in Duke Forever. And uh, they liked key cards. But as Duke says, key cards. I don't need no fucking key cards. <laughs> and the ego meter, instead of having health, uh, to interact with things in the game to drive up the ego level to make you stronger. Drinking beer making you tougher. Pretty cool, in my opinion. <laughs> Another question? Oh you, oh, you have a compound question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I couldn't tell you whose idea it was the developers at uh, Gearbox, but I, I don't. You know, again, I'm a voice actor. I'm not involved in the actual creation of the game in any way. Uh, the game is pretty much done before they come to me. Uh, I have no issue with that at all. I, I've played, like I said, I've played the game several times. I love it. I, I just think it's great. It's my favorite game of all time. And it's not because I'm the voice on it. I love it. It's naughty, raunchy, nasty, funny, gory, all at the same time. You know? Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. Um, the guy in here earlier asked us to ask you about My Little Pony. My Little Pony. What is your take on My Little Pony? What the hell is my, what the hell is my little pony? <laughs> oh wait, I know what it is. Doug Huggum. How did you get involved with that? Did they just approach and ask you to do that? Yeah, those guys live in San Diego. And they have a studio in a, in a, in a lakeside, which is uh, the other side of the county from me. But they, 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 they emailed me one day and said, hey, we want to do this funny little parody called Doug Huggum. Would you be willing? I said, yeah, I'm attention whore. I'll do anything for attention. <laughs> and uh, I went over to their studio and, and, and shot that day. And I, I thought what they put together was very funny. How about a nice Christian side hug? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. You right there. Yeah, if there's one thing you could have changed about Duke Nukem Forever, just anything about it, what would it be? <sighs> wow. What would I change? I would like to have all of the weapons at the same time, and I would like to have cheat codes on my PC so I can uh, turn off clipping and walk through walls because I've gotten frustrated with a couple of levels. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be able to have some of the things that Duke 3D had, some of the cheat codes and stuff, that would be great. Yes, sir, right here. Me? Yes, you. Yeah, you. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, How are you approached to uh, get be the voice of uh, Big in Sonic Adventure. <laughs> um, the way I got big in Sonic Adventures is that uh, Lonnie Manella, who's one of the top casting directors in the industry, who hired me to be Duke Nukem originally, also was doing the casting for Sonic Adventures in San Diego, where I live. 
And uh, she said, hey, um, I don't know if you're interested in this game. I said, I'm interested in all games. Does it pay? Yes, it pays. I want to be in it. <laughs> So then we have this really silly character called Big the Cat, and they'll have to make up some kind of voice for it. We want it really goofy and dumb. Uh, uh, okay. I said, I could, I do something really stupid like this. And they went, oh, that's what we want. I went, no, 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 don't pick that one. <laughs> but uh, in, I'm no longer the voice of Big the Cat. I, I don't know if you know, but uh, all, of the, uh, all of the actors who were on Sonic Adventures, we all live in San Diego. That's how we all got cast for it. Except, I think, one guy who came down from L.A. Uh, but no, they recast the entire game series with the folks with the cartoon, rather than taking everybody from the game and putting us on the cartoon, which would have been awesome! <laughs> but hey, you know, that's the way it goes. Right. Next. Yes, what's your question? Um, aside from uh, Big the Cat, I understand also voiced um, two of uh, the E series, like E-123 and Omega and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of robots. <laughs> yeah, um, what, what would you be, um, were those basically simple voices for you? Yeah, I, the Omega-123 robot was just a monotone voice like this, was it not? Am I mistaken? Did he talk like this with no inflection in his voice? Yeah, robots are the easiest to do. There's no acting involved. You simply talk like this with no inflection whatsoever. And then they process it to sound mechanical or whatever. Yeah, those are really easy. I love getting those gigs. <laughs> Wait in the back, sir. Yes, uh, what was your favorite level of the uh, the, you know, I can't tell you because I haven't finished the game. Like I said, I'm a voice actor, not a gamer. I haven't finished it yet because I, I'm stuck on a level that's pissing me off. <laughs> I wish I could tell you, it's the water level. What's the name of that level? God, I just wish I had cheat codes because I'm playing it on the PC because the load times are fast. Yes, sir. That's the one. How did you know that? Are you stuck there, too? Don't tell me how to get out of it. I don't want anybody's help. Okay? I have the great big book that came with the uh, fully loaded package. I don't know if you've seen my video on that. Uh, NVIDIA, their GeForce 560 card, they put together a big box called Duke's Fully Loaded Package. <laughs> and it comes with the 560 card, which is huge, and a huge book called The History of uh, Duke Nukem. And it gives you all of the levels, maps, tips and tricks, and how to get through everything. I just haven't opened the book to find the way out of that level yet, but I will. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's funny how you gamers, you, you amaze me. You know, I got through the whole game in eight hours. Okay, first of all, you did it in pussy mode. <laughs> you did it at the low mode. But why do you want to blast through a game in eight hours? What? Why? I'm hoping this takes me a couple of months to get through, because, well, then again, you guys play for 12, 14 hours at a time. <laughs> I only have an hour, maybe, a day to spend, you know, playing the game. So, because I've got other things to do, you know. Um, I'm hoping that it takes a long time. Um, yeah, I didn't have to pay for the game, but if I had paid for my copy of the game, I certainly would have wanted it to last even longer. You guys just want to blast through it like, you know, you should treat video games more like sex. Make it last longer. <laughs> Okay, we've got some more questions in just a second. Um, first, let me go ahead and, and play you a little clip of outtakes from Duke Nukem Forever because I've been asked to, if I could do this. Uh, let's see, where is it? Hello. I know it's in here somewhere. While I'm searching for it, here's a cute little story. 1989, I'm uh, working at a radio station in Philadelphia with Danny Bonaducci. You guys remember him from the Hardin family? Okay, it was a disc jockey back then. Steven Tyler and Aerosmith came in and I interviewed them on my show, and Steven Tyler got a big kick out of my name. John St. John, you got two Johns in your name, man. <laughs> so yeah, my mama loved me so much she named me twice, and he laughed. <laughs> then a year later, the album Permanent Vacation came out. You know that album? Yeah. Track six is called... St. John. You heard that song? So I like to say that I was the inspiration behind this Aerosmith song. That may not be true, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. Let's see, where is that outtake? Okay, shut up. Okay. Thank you, let's hear it. 
shirt for Steven Tyler and Aerosmith. Yeah. Okay, so here's uh, here's just it's a just a short break thing. I could only find so many outtakes from the game, but here's what I've got for you. Duke Nukem Forever outtakes. Time to quit pissing around and get this big dick. Uh, whoops. I'm sorry. <laughs> Time to quit pissing around and get this big guy back into action. Sure, kid. Just don't let me find this on eBay, you little shit. <laughs> sure, kid. But I better not find this on eBay. Yeah, but after 10 years of... What? Yeah, but after 12... How many years has it been? Yeah, but after 12 fucking years, it should be. See you at the party, slut. See you at the party. Uh, looks like those alien bastards took my be beer? Took my beer? <laughs> Looks like those alien bastards took all my beer. Oh, it's not all mine? All right, all right, I, I... Looks like those alien bastards took all my... Shit, I did it again. <laughs> Looks like those alien bastards took my beer. That really pisses me... Whoop, pop to pee. <laughs> that really pisses me off. Hail to the... <laughs> Hail to... <clears throat> Hell. Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king, baby. What? Did you think I was gone forever? What? The fucking crybaby? Did you think I was gone forever? The crow was just an ad lib. What? Did you think I was gone forever? I'll rip out your eyeball and piss on you. I'll rip out your eyeball and... I'll rip out your ball and piss on your brain. I'll rip out your eyeball and piss on your brain. Key card. I don't need a fucking key card. Cat cat. Cat in this one. Key card. I don't need a fucking key card. You've got a lot of guts. Ready to spill them? You've got a lot of guts, you ugly fucker. You've got a lot of guts. Let's see them. Oh, you're so tiny and cute. I could carry you around in my pocket like a little pet. <laughs> Size only matters when you're full blown, baby. So blow me. Size only matters when you're full grown, baby. Oh my God, Duke, thank you. I'll go down with you anytime. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> so you probably noticed the last take in each one of those was the one actually used in the game. I don't know if that uh, made sense to you. Or how many of you have actually played Duke Nukem forever? <laughs> cool, well the rest of you fucking buy the game! <laughs> 25 bucks up. So, um, for the, for the best, question, um, best question of this session, I'll have uh, a prize for somebody. And, um, We'll just see how that goes, okay? I'll, I'll be the judge of what the best question is in this uh, Q&A. So let's continue with the Q&A, shall we? What's your question, sir? Would you like a pack of bubble gum? <laughs> I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of ass. <laughs> Got any of that? Not yours, sir. <laughs> Back there, sir. Yeah, um, how long did it take you in production to do your voiceover? Oh, you mean for Duke Nukem Forever? For just yeah, that well, game? In comparison to Duke Nukem 3D and this one now. Oh, okay. Now, Duke Nukem 3D was all done in one session, in one afternoon, in 1995. <laughs> Long time ago. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever was four or five sessions that run about two to three hours each. Um, what a lot of people don't know is, for, now mo most voice actors will go into a studio somewhere and just record and then walk away when they're done. I don't do that because I own and operate my own studio. So what I do is I'll record all of the dialogue while they, while they listen in over a phone patch. And then afterwards, I spend another hour to two hours cleaning the audio before I send it off to, uh, in this case, Gearbox Software. And by cleaning the audio, that means no breaths. I edit them all out. No mouth noises, which I get a lot of. Uh, I have a very sensitive microphone made by Neumann. You know, it's a really high-end mic. And it picks up everything, every little noise, spit noise, the whole works. And I have to go in and zoom in on the waveform and edit those out. Because I don't know if they would do that at the game development company. But I want the Duke voiceover to be perfect when I send it. 
So I take the time to, to do all of that. And that adds time. So the Duke sessions, you know, four or five of them, two or three hours recording, and then another two hours cleaning the audio before I send them off. So I know it sounds like, oh yeah, well, big deal, you put 10, 12 hours into it. Uh, no, I'm a, um, I'm a perfectionist, too. Are you? Yeah. Cool. You're anal retentive? Yeah. All right, man. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> Next meeting's at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Over here, sir. What's your question? You talking about last night? How much did I drink? Dude, I, I woke up at the crack of noon when they called and said, you know you have a panel at 12.45. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, the actual question would be, uh, the answer is too much. <laughs> I drink too much. I don't drink at home, by the way. At, at home, I'm a dad with kids, you know. But when I come to these cons, I freaking do noodle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think you expect it of me, right? Yeah. Don't, do you expect me to be a party guy when I come to these things? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> I love fans. You all rock. Right there on the aisle, sir. What's your question? Besides Duke and Big the Cat, what other roles have you played? You ever play Half-Life Opposing Force? The drill sergeant, Dwight T. Barnes, who's a takeoff of Arlie Ermey from Full Metal Jacket. What is your major malfunction, son? That's one. I'm Hans Gruber in the Die Hard trilogy. Oh, wow. Uh, Call of Cthulhu, War of, uh, World of Warcraft, and King Varian Wren. There's so many that I, I really can't recall them all. I have been in somewhere between 120 and 150 games in total. Um, I'm all of the male cast in Candyland. Yay, Candyland port game. I mean, Candyland adventure game. Um, there, there are a lot of characters. You know, if you go to the Internet Movie Database site, they list a lot of my credits. And I have to actually go there to try to remember what the hell I've done, because I don't keep track of them. And they don't all send copies of the game. Duke Nukem Forever was a very special thing, so they sent me a ton of copies, you know, and the Ball of Steel edition, I got like a dozen of those, which are gone already. I have one that I brought with me, but I promised it to uh, uh, somebody uh, on staff here at uh, Kineticon, because they're, they're great staff. Don't you think the staff here is doing a great job? Yeah. I don't know if you guys interact with them here voice actors do, but they are the best wranglers I've ever dealt with. Well, they handle me well, that's all I can say. Uh, over here, sir, with a gun. Uh, I have a question that I think only Duke could answer. All right, then I'll do it in the Duke voice. What's your question? Why are you so great? <laughs> because I'm the king, baby. Good enough for Is that a good enough answer? Does that work? Hey, I'm considering, I'm, I'm thinking right now, I've been writing some songs. I wrote a song called um, I've Got Balls of Steel uh, at a convention in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago, which we recorded live, but the recording was bad. But I'm, I'm considering doing an album of Duke Nukem stuff. Uh, and I'm thinking Duke rapping would be pretty cool. <laughs> If it's the right stuff, because Duke can't sing for shit. I can sing, but in the Duke voice, it's hard to sing. Uh, next question. Oh, back there. Hi, I'm going to be able to you to read something. Could I pass you the slope? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, sir. I'm going to be you to read something. Could I pass you the slope? Oh, you want me to read something? Yes. Yeah, bring it up. And in the meantime, another question. Uh, right there, sir, the tie on. Given the development hell of Duke Nukem Forever and the really uptight reviewers, is there even a snowball's chance in hell we're getting more Duke in the future? Um, People buy it. There have been hints of some downloadable content coming this summer. So I, I think that's something we can look forward to. I think that um, uh, Borderlands really made Gearbox Software who they are today, made them very big. But I think Duke Nukem Forever is probably reviving that company even more. And I think they're going to move away from Borderlands and more into doing more Duke Nukem Forever or, or you know, more Duke Nukem uh, games. But I, I don't really have any inside information on that. I'm just very hopeful. <laughs> Fingers are crossed. Put my kid through college. Buy that game. <laughs> right there behind him. Um, I was wondering if you ever, like, went into, like, Target or, like, a public place and started talking like Duke Nukem. Oh, no, no. However, it's fun, funny that you asked that. Um, a few days before the game was released, uh, my 13-year-old daughter and I were at the mall doing some shopping for her. And um, there's a GameStop store. And I said, hey, let's pop in there real quick and just see if they have any signage up for Duke Nukem Forever, because the game's coming out in just a few days. And she goes, okay, cool, Danny. So we walk in, and of course, there's t everything in the store was Duke Nukem Forever, giant posters, boxes, everything. And I'm walking around, and, 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 and the guy behind the counter goes, hi, sir, is there anything I can help you with? 
he was kind of, you know, <laughs> going through puberty. I went, I'm just looking around to make sure that you have Duke Nukem Forever signage up. And he goes, oh, really? Why? I said, because I'm Duke. And the kid just about shit his pants. <laughs> the back, opens the door, yells something, and three other geeks come out. <laughs> they're all, oh my god, don't go, 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 And my daughter's like, wow, Dad, do they always do this? <laughs> I don't know, sweetheart, this is the first time I've seen this kind of reaction. And so, so she says, can we go to some other stores, too? <laughs> So I actually took my girlfriend to uh, a, uh, a GameStop store where she lives up in San Clemente. And uh, the same thing. Walk into the store and they asked if they could help me. I said, just look and make sure you have Duke Nukem Forever stuff up. Why is that, sir? Because I do. And they just flip out. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so I have to read this real quick. Uh, <laughs> my little pony. <laughs> I used to wonder what friendship could be. And how sweet as magic would be. Did that do it justice? <laughs> My little pony. Okay, next question. Uh, right now, so. I read somewhere on the internet that if, uh, Thank you, Al Gore, on the internet. <laughs> Which, which one of the internets were you on? I'm just curious. Well, my friends went for a fee. Um, record things in the Duke's voice and send it to people. You know, oh, you read somewhere that I do that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, do you still do that and how much? I still do. It's a hundred bucks. Go to my website. Click on the PayPal link. <laughs> I will not say this is Duke Nukem, okay? Because of copyright laws or what have you. But I will, in that voice, go, Steve's not here. Leave your message after the tone or go fuck yourself. <laughs> down your neck. <laughs> My favorite line from Duke Nukem Forever is, I had eggs for breakfast, your mom had sausage. <laughs> That's just so raunchy, I love it. But you know, in Duke Nukem Forever, they replace the line, I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck with, and I'm sure you've done it before he kicks the field goal, I'll rip out your eyeball and piss on your brain. And at some one point in the game, have you gotten there? He, he does rip the eyeball out and piss on the brain. Duke is a pisser. And then, yes, I have an 18-year-old son who just graduated from high school last month. And um, he will do this. He'll go. Yeah, hold on a second. Hey, Dad. It's Ryan. Duke it. <laughs> I'll go, hey, Ryan. This is Duke Nukem. Eat shit and die. <laughs> Peter Griffin? No, no, no. Okay. Seth, oh, oh, Seth MacFarlane, he's awesome. He went to college and spoke. Would you ever do that for yourself? I would love to do that. I would love to. I want to attend every con that I can go to. So y'all, other cons you go to, contact them and say, oh, John St. John's a great guest. Have him come. <laughs> and, and here comes Rim. Y'all know Rim, right? Yeah. Do you know Rim is the reason I'm here this weekend? And Rim, I want to thank you because this connect con is Awesome! I love this con. You guys are great. Thanks. So what's the man specifically about it? Well, first of all, the staff, the wranglers, the handlers handled me so well. <laughs> no, no, the staff has been really super, super, super cool. And secondly, and I'm sorry to put you all second, but the fans are really awesome. You guys are... And the cosplay here is amazing. I've seen some better costumes here than I've seen at Comic-Con in San Diego. Honest wow. to God. So you guys, y'all, 
die-hard, you know, con fans, and, and thank God you're here. You know, you make this really a wonderful experience for the guests who come to these things. I can tell you that. <laughs> so it sounds like if we brought Tom St. John back, you guys would approve. <laughs> I told them the story of our somewhat failed late show and how we met you originally, and then <laughs> the fact that none of us knew that Duke Nukem was coming except you. Oh yeah, and I didn't even know why I was going. <laughs> they, that, was, that was a PAX, yep. Seattle. I that was... them, I'm like, dude, you want to come to the Penny Arcade Expo? I'll buy a plane ticket. I'm some dude. <laughs> it was totally random, and and I had no clue that that. Uh... Gearbox was going to announce the release of Duke Nukem Forever. I had no idea at all. It was just coincidence that you invited me as a guest. And then uh, somebody, was it you, who said, hey, in the opening ceremonies, go down to the microphone and ask him, you know, if they've got any gum. So here's, what was it, the, uh, the Bill Gates Hall in uh, Oh, yeah, Seattle. the Battle Royale Hall, the gigantic uh, like Gi symphony. A gigantic symphony hall with, I don't know how many people were in there. The opening ceremony was packed, though. So that place holds, what, six, seven, eight thousand people, maybe? Maybe more? Huge. It was huge. They had giant screens up on the stage and microphones down in front for, uh, for uh, attendees to come up and ask questions. And I was like one of the last people in line. And I step up to the microphone and they put a camera on me and I'm on these big screens. And, and the, 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 uh, the founders of, of, of Penny Arcade Expo said, yes sir, what's your question? And I just said, I'm all out of gum, got any? <laughs> and the whole place went nuts! <laughs> uh, thousands of people went, Whoa! And, and I think that tipped the hat right there, and everybody went, oh my god, why is he here, and why did he say that? And I didn't know why you guys wanted me to ask that question. I thought for sure somebody at, at 2K or Gearbox contacted you and said, yeah, no, we, we, we honestly, really? it was between you and the angry video game nerd, and I emailed you both at the same time, he didn't respond right away, you did, so we're like, oh, god. John said John. Oh, yeah. It was a roll of dice, baby. You ever do different dice? Now you do. This dude hooks me up with all the booth babes at the Gearbox thing at the con. Oh, they're hot. I love the Duke babes. I'm such a pig. Okay, before we go back to questions and answers, um, I, I wanted to play something that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, a a fellow who does a text editor program of some type asked me a long time ago, because I love the Duke voice, and I was wondering if you would read these commands for me. ta 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 dot cn. And I said, sure, whatever. Well, I did it, and I don't know how people find this stuff, but I've landed about a dozen jobs based on this silly thing. Text edit. About text edit. Chinese text converter. Disk utility. Finder. Grab. Screen. Mail. Script editor. Hide text edit. Hide others. File, new, close, save, save as, save all, insert, find. Okay, that's my favorite one. Insert. So that's kind of strange. I don't even know what that's used for. I guess you guys do, all, most of you being geeks and nerds and what have you, right? What, what is it used for, you know? I was going to ask the question. Oh, okay. What's your question, sir? Let's go back to it. No, I don't hate, don't hate. I just found out about Doom Doom from a while ago, people. Um, I, I love your voice. It's epic. Thank you. I found out about the game, so I just had an idea. Mm -hmm. Can you use your Doom Doom voice to say something about this sword? That sword's too big for you. <laughs> You've got swords of steel. <laughs> or aluminum foil, I'm not sure which. <laughs> Plastic. Yes, right here, sir, what's your question? Yes, you. Okay, yeah, I'm talking to you. Uh, I have a more serious question, actually, that doesn't really relate that much to the Duke stuff. Uh -huh. uh, you originally started off as a disc jockey and working at radio, right? Right. What, uh, I'm guessing that was what you had wanted to do as a career beforehand. I did. Uh, what actually prompted you to go in that direction? What made you want to go into radio in the first place? Oh, to radio? Okay. Um, I was living in a small town in North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I was 14 years old. 
and I was inspired by George Carlin, God rest his soul, who in 1975... So, um, yeah, I'm living in that little town in North Carolina in 1975, and I'm 14 years old, and I listened to his album, a a FM and AM. And he did a bunch of disc jockey-like characters. And I used to, you know, at school, I would, you know, be, what a white radio! And my friends at school all said, God, you sound better than the DJs on that radio station. You should go down there and get a job. So one Saturday, I went down to the radio station, and I met the program director there, who went by the name of Jimi Hendrix. I know, right? And I said, uh, I want to be on the radio. He goes, uh, yeah, what? What makes you think you should be on the radio? And I started doing wonderful white on the radio. He goes, oh, yeah, that's not bad. So he sent me down to their production room in the basement and told me to talk on some records. He goes, you need to learn how to post records. I said, what's that? You know what posting is? Talking up to the post of the record, that means talking on the beginning of a record up until where the vocals start. And by then you're done. I got really, really good at it. Yeah. I spent like three, four hours down in that studio talking on Barry Manilow records. <laughs> hey, it's the 70s, okay? And, uh, and, and, and the Bay City Rollers. Anyway, uh, he came down at the end of uh, the day and listened to the tape and said, okay, you're on this Saturday night. So at 14 years old, I had a weekend uh, radio show, and I did three or four weekends, and he said, you know what, we want to put you on full-time Monday through Friday, ask your parents if they'll let you do it. <laughs> and my parents said, keep your grades up, and sure, you know, uh, after dinner, your father will drive you to the radio station, and at midnight, when you sign it off the air, your oldest brother will pick you up every night. And, uh, you know, if you think you can handle it, and so I did. And then I did radio for 30 years, 30 plus years. <laughs> And I still, yeah, and I still go back on the air every once in a while. There's a radio station in Los Angeles called Cater Earth 101, where I most recently work. And uh, from time to time, I'll go back and do a radio job just for fun. I don't really have the time for it. But that, that's what led me into voice acting. I was a wacky morning radio guy and production director for many years. And I used to do character voices for other shows. Like uh, in Los Angeles a few years back, I was the producer for George Lopez. When he, before he got on TV, he had a radio show. And I did the character voices and produced all the comedy bits for George Lopez. And then Sinbad replaced him. You know who Sinbad is? Yeah. So I, I did voices for him and, and produced stuff for him. And way back in the day, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mark and Brian. They're a big Los Angeles morning show. But when they were in Birmingham, Alabama many years ago, I was their producer and did character voices for them. And that all led me into voice acting. I had to do a lot of voices over the years. And I thought radio was going to be my thing. I thought I was going to be a radio star and make big money and be famous for that. But then companies like Clear Channel and Viacom and Cumulus came in and, and when deregulation happened for the FCC, they were allowed to buy as many radio stations as they wanted, it seemed. And uh, terrestrial radio in this country went straight to hell. Maybe you've noticed, radio sucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you think it's just in your town, it's not. Radio sucks everywhere. And the, and the generic disc jockeys and music that you hear over and over again on the radio station in your town, it's the same exact guy and the same exact songs in San Diego, and Oklahoma City, and Portland, Oregon, and Bangor, Maine, and Boston, Massachusetts, and Birmingham, Alabama, everywhere. It's generic radio, and it ruined my career. I actually printed hundreds of bumper stickers that said, Clear Channel ruined my career. Yeah! And mailed them out to disc jockeys all over the country who lost their jobs. And they were bent. So, sorry, I could go on forever about being pissed off about terrestrial radio, but that's not about what we're here for. So, next question from the gentleman in the hat. I, uh, Don't speak in an English accent, dude. <laughs> they're not really questions as much as suggestions. Yes. Uh, me and my friends have been joking about this. We've been going on a bunch of trips. And we've uh -huh. been using uh, the Garmin's there. And I was uh -huh. thinking you should try and get a hold of some of these people. And I have make tried that. Duke Garmin. <laughs> I have done that. I own a Tom Tom, and Homer Simpson is the voice I use most often. I would love crap out of that. <laughs> I, I would love to. You know, I tried to contact them and said I'd, I'd love to do the Duke Duke voice for your for your uh, Tom Tom navigators, and no response whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sure every one of us here would buy a garment. Would you? <laughs> that would be really cool. So you're driving along, and the navigator comes on and goes, Go two more blocks, then turn right. Yes, <laughs> hole. <laughs> I actually have an attempt 
attempted to get Tom Tom to talk to me about that, and they just. Uh, and second, um, with your, you were talking about your album thing, and you were talking about rapping. Yeah. I was actually thinking, uh, and this would be hilarious, is if you, if you uh, followed after William Shatner and did the same thing he did, only with the Duke Nukem voice, because. Uh, that would actually be really fun. Mm -hmm. Shatner Shatner in a boat on a river, encountering <laughs> trees and rumbling skies. I <laughs> Shatner 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 hung up on something. It's trying to import something it doesn't like, I guess. Um, so next question would be this gentleman right here. Duke Holiday CD. Duke Holiday CD. Christmas musical. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? <laughs> Could be good. Walking in a winter fucking wonderland. <laughs> oh. In the middle we can kill a snowman. <laughs> yeah. Right here, sir, with the hat on. Well, I can tell you right now, Kineticon is quickly becoming a favorite. I'm, I'm really having a good yeah. time. Yeah! But, but, MAGFest, oh. music and gaming festival yeah. in Washington, D.C. every January, is my personal favorite. It's, for me, four days of non-stop partying my ass off and being a freaking rock star. <laughs> you know, I go home and, and nobody knows me. I'm just another dad, just another guy, you know, in Oceanside, California. But I go to MAGFest and I'm a goddamn rock star. <laughs> I have an entourage of anywhere between 12 and 40 people who follow me everywhere I go. <laughs> I have women hanging out all over me all the time. And what you're talking about specifically, and I, uh, a guy posted a video on YouTube of my MAGFest party thing. Um, I did 32 room parties last year at MAGFest, and they followed me around with a camera and, you know, take my entourage. And, and it's kind of unfair to, what we called it was a, a John St. John's flash mob, where um, we would go down the stairwell at, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, open the door to the stair, you know, to that floor and listen to where there was noise coming out of any room. And as soon as we heard, you know, where there was activity in a room, I'd run up and knock on the door, and they'd open the door, and I'd go, might have do parties with you? And they'd go, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'd say, might my friends come in? Yeah, come on. And then their jaws drop with 40 people. <laughs> It's all been video documented. It was fun, but I broke the record. I had a personal best record because the year before I did uh, like 27, 28 room parties. I had been invited to all those parties, and so last year I did 32 parties, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was legendary. <laughs> What's your question, sir? Sure, sure. Uh, I did not dis sign a non-disclosure agreement, so I will say that uh, Monday morning I'll be in Los Angeles to uh, record for a game called Guild Wars 2. Yeah. I have no specifics about it, so I can't tell you who I am or what I'm doing. I just know that I'll be recording for that. Uh, I have a new game that's just, uh, just about to be or just has been released called Rochard which is a side-scroller, but a very cool, in-depth side-scroller. It's the uh, first use of the Unity engine for the PlayStation 3. So it's really smooth playing, and it's fun. And I'm the lead character, a guy named John Rochard, who, he's uh, an astro miner, but he's from Mississippi, so he, he talks like this. And um, it's a very colorful game where you have to defend the asteroid you're mining on from aliens, but you don't have any weapons. You only have miner's tools. Futuristic miner's tools. So you have to be pretty creative with it. So Rochard is a really cool one. Um, I recorded a few games in the last couple of months, but to be honest with you, I can't remember the names of them. So, they, you know, they come fast and furious. So, uh, Sorry, I can't be more specific. Next question, uh, how about this guy right here? Hey? Yeah, you All man, right. Dominique. Uh, well, I was just thinking, could you say a line from Transformers, like Optimus Prime or something, Optimus Prime? Or something, like Autobots roll out? You should not have lied to us. 
I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't do Transformers, so. You mean in the Duke voice? Yeah, like like Autobots roll out or something. Autobots roll out. <laughs> I think Duke and Transformers might have been cool. Somebody call Michael Bay. Yes, sir. <laughs> at what point, uh, how would Duke react to current games having online passes? You know, where they restrict online multiplayer modes? If you buy the game, you use Passcodes. I don't need no fucking passcodes. <laughs> Is that like that? Yeah. Hey, right back here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, you. All right. In the Duke voice, <laughs> how does Duke feel about people who download his game and stuff? Who, who download what? Pirate, pirate, pirate. Oh, pirate games? You pirate my game, I'll rip your head off and shoot down your leg. <laughs> Pirating games means I don't get paid. And when I don't get paid, I'm not happy. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll do more, uh, I'll answer more questions in a second. I, I have a few things that I wanted to share with you today. So, um, as a voice actor, uh, there are, oh gosh, it's doing it again. Maybe I can play it this way. I'm so sorry. This is, okay, there we go. Um, as a voice actor, you have to have a demo reel to get work. And if you want a commercial work, you have to have a commercial demo reel. If you want promo work, you have to... If you want to do movie trailers, you got to have a trailer reel. If you want to do animation, which I really am interested in, you have to have a character's demo. So this is my uh, current character's demo. These are some of the voices that I do. Hello, I'm John St. John, voiceover artist, and here's some of what I can do. Smithers, who is that large-voiced individual? Ah, uh, that's John St. John, sir. Ah, uh, St. John, eh? Is he a bill? Ah, uh, yes, sir, I believe he is. Excellent. This is Roger Rabbit! Really? Get St. John a break! After all, he seems like a very sensible and sober pal. Hi, this is your best friend, the Shadow St. Stephens of Americans Out the 40. Greetings, boys and ghoulies! It's illegal only on MTV. Nowhere else. John St. John keeps his house in the pink with a full foot of orange corning pink fiberglass insulation. This is Captain Jean Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Mr. Oh. LaForge, please remove that silly visor and engage. Ah, but I was a boy, we didn't have this Star Trek giddy spacecraft. Uh, you're giving me knockers here. Hi. Inspector Kitchen may return after these messages. Oh, goody. Hi, folks. We're in the fraud here. Yeah. Yellow moons, pink hearts, green clovers, frosted lucky charms. They're magically delicious, don't you know? There is no honor in defeat for the Shadow Warrior. This is Droopy. Going down, sir. Hello, this is James Mason, and I'm quite dead. Really, I'm quite sure. This is over, J. Tipton. Oh, that rabbit has stolen the Illudium Q32 explosive space modulator. That makes me very angry. So that's what a character demo reel sounds like. Um, uh, being a voice actor, you know, you can't just do video games and expect to make a living. There's a lot of commercial work, infomercial work, uh, message on hold, I do a lot of that stuff. But my main bread and butter comes from what's called radio imaging and TV imaging. And that's where you're the voice of a radio station or the voice of a TV station. And uh, there's a demo for that too. And here's uh, some of the stations uh, I've been involved with.
Chicago's heart and soul. Oh, yeah. We're hot for you. 24-7. KSexRadio.com. The all-new Rock 106.7. There's only one radio station that plays smooth jazz. KMJZ. Only one station in Chicago knows your heart and soul. 103.1. Chicago's heart and soul. So that's how I make, uh, you know, my regular monthly mortgage payment is from radio stations and TV stations. Like I'm the voice of the, currently the CW affiliate in San Diego and a Fox affiliate in Detroit where I uh, do all the news imaging for them. Like tonight at 11 on Fox 5 News. That kind of stuff. You know the promo news guys here all the time? Yeah, I'm one of those guys. Didn't know Duke was doing news promos, did you? <laughs> kind of weird. Huh? I, I would like to do, you know, Duke on the radio. I, I created a little thing that I call uh, Duke Rock on Radio Imaging. Uh, but only one radio station ever tried it out, and they didn't stay with it very long. I think that would have been awesome. Did you have a question about that? Yes, yeah, Mr. Shears, how's your band doing? My band? Yeah. Uncle Boogie? We're doing very well. We played Disneyland uh, last month, which was very cool. We got to play the Tomorrowland stage, which is where wow. the Beach Boys started their career. And um, I, I have a band called Uncle Boogie back in Southern California. It's a cover band. So uh, the uh, two lead female singers and I were all vocal impressionists. So when we, uh, like when we do Love Shack by the B-52s, obviously I sing lead on that. If you see a painted sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the... <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and, and the girls in the band, they do great vocal impressions too. They do a great Alanis Morissette and Lady Gaga. And, uh, we're a fairly popular band back there, but we've taken the summer off so that I can do things like this. And in the fall, we'll start playing again. Uh, back to questions, I guess? Yes, sir, in the uh, hat back here. Has um, voice acting impacted your personal life at home, like with your kids and your wife, the partying and then going back? No wife. But yes, it has impacted my life at home in, in a very positive, great way. My commute every day is 20 steps down the hallway. <laughs> I'm home every day with my kids which is very cool. Now that of course is changing because uh, my oldest daughter is attending college, she's moved away. Uh, my son just graduated from high school like I mentioned earlier and he'll be moving away before long. But I still have a 13 year old at home. Uh, a redheaded girl who's 13 and boy oh boy. <laughs> my two other children were a, a dream to raise so I knew there had to be trouble at some point. Are we running out of time, Rob? I'm afraid we're out of time. Oh my. This is going to conclude the panel today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will leave you with a little bit of audio as we walk out today. Um, I played the imaging uh, demo for you about you know how I, I image radio and TV stations. One of the other jobs that I like to do that I loved for so many years was uh, broadcast radio. So I'll give you what's called a composite air check. This is me doing radio. And thank you so much for coming to my panel. You guys are awesome. Weekend with John St. John. KRTH, Los Angeles. KR 101, the soundtrack of Southern California. Great music on the way this hour. From Al Green, the Beatles, Marvin Gaye, Rod Stewart. And right now, CCR. It's Proud Mary at KR 101.